So good morning, afternoon or evening, and thank you for joining our Zerto 7 launch webinar. And my name is Caroline Seymour. I'm the VP of Product Marketing here at Zerto. And we're so excited to bring Zerto 7.0 to the market with Converge Disaster Recovery and Backup. And in this webinar, we shall be sharing all of the details with you. But just as a reminder, we shall have a Q&A at the end. So please enter any questions that you may have in the Q&A on the right hand side of your screen and we shall get them answered. Now, we have a number of folks that I would like to welcome today. Rob Streche, our Senior Vice President of Products. Heisberg Janssen van Dorn, our Technology Evangelist. And lastly, John Grant from Electric Power Research Institute, who is one of our Zerto 7 early adopter customers. And you'll be hearing from each one of these over the course of the next hour. Now, before I hand over to Rob to walk through the new capabilities we're bringing to market, I want to talk about the significance of this release. Today, we are challenging the status quo. And I love this sentence that you see here. The most dangerous phrase in the, in the language is, we've always done it this way. Now, as we think about backup, it's been a staple of business continuity since the dawn of the data center. And although it has evolved, backup technology hasn't really gone through any fundamental changes since it became a key part of an IT infrastructure. So we have had to do it the same way for a long time now. Well, today, you don't have to do it this way anymore. We are bringing a new way to solve for backup, just as we did for disaster recovery. Today, we're introducing a new era for disaster recovery and backup and data protection as a whole. And with Zerto 7, we have converged disaster recovery and backup in one simple scalable platform, our IT resilience platform. This brings change for backup, moving it from periodic to continuous and allows us to bring all of our core values to, to, of the platform to solve for DR and now backup use cases. And why is this important? Let us just think back or rather think about today's business. We need to think about how we live in an always on completely connected world of explosive data growth, the proliferation of public, private and hybrid clouds and the ever increasing complexity inside and outside of your on-premise data center. It all adds up to the need to really move on from an old school thinking about how you protect your valuable data and systems. And so you need to deliver to the business a continuous IT and business operations. And you need to be able to provide transformation to the business. Now, what you see here are many of the challenges that we see our customers are facing. Complexity issues with old legacy tools and multiple tools to manage their environment. Intensive resources to manage these environments, risk of data loss, lengthy backup windows that potentially impacts production environments, performance, and also the availability. Slow recovery speeds that also impacts availability and performance. The bottom line is that all of this leads to systemic risk to the business, and also to your brand. And with Zerto 7, we continue to build on our IT resilience platform and our vision to deliver a converged solution for customers to address their DR and backup use case needs, deliver mobility or portability across on-premises and also multiple clouds, and to be protected as you go from and between clouds with no vendor lock-in. Migration capabilities, so you can go across your hypervisors, on-premises or clouds without lock-in on your storage or also your hardware. And of course, the orchestration and automation that's built in. And lastly, the analytics that delivers full visibility, control and planning. We are bringing our simplicity to solve the complexity challenges that companies face with backup. Now, the speed of business is really pushing us toward a stated requirement of continuous protection model. And so Zerto has brought its innovative CDP, continuous data protection, to remove the performance impact challenges on production environments. 
which reduces the speed of recovery time challenges that customers face. And we're bringing our journaling technology to allow for that granular recovery needed for today's business. We bring our orchestration and, our, and automation to, to automate those manual workloads and reduce the burden on IT. We bring our vendor agnostic approach so companies are not locked into cloud or storage or hardware. And all of this is delivered on one platform, not multiple tools. And so we're bringing our technology that changed the DR game now to the backup. So that phrase earlier that we heard or I talked about, we've always done it this way. Well, now we challenge that. And to tell us more about Zerto 7, I'd like to hand over to Rob. Rob, take it away. Thanks, Caroline. Really appreciate it. And welcome, everybody. So excited to be here with the launch of Zerto 7. And with that, we're going to jump right in and talk about the fact that we've actually been getting some really great feedback from our customers over the last few months. We did an early adopter program. And as Yan Feng, uh, a global automotive interiors company, really came and gave us some critical feedback that we heard from a couple different customers, but they put it really succinctly in saying that they really are looking forward to managing their DR and their backup through a single platform with Zerto 7. And this is really being able to bring together that DR and backup, saving them time and real hard dollar costs as well. So really excited to introduce the new long-term retention capabilities, that of the Elastic Journal, our intelligent search and index, data protection workflows, and target repositories. We've spent a lot of time really talking with customers, talking with you, and getting a better understanding of what you're looking for in that long-term retention. So the first new concept that we brought to bear on the market, and we're really the only ones who could bring this out, is the concept of the Elastic Journal. The Elastic Journal really helps you marry that short-term and long-term retention into one platform. Helps you understand where you can get things that need really tight recovery time and recovery point objectives, and then look to things that you may need for years for compliance or corporate governance. Bring those in, in context of that application or virtual protection group as we call them, or in that VM to help you understand where did it live, how long did it live, and from what points in time can you actually bring it back? Again, that may be for 30 days in the short-term repository and for 30 years in the long-term repository. Of course, with no data loss or downtime, that's extremely important to be able to recover a file, a VM, an app, or even a site. The uniqueness of it is that once you go and protect that file, VM, app, or site, you're protecting it over time. And it's in context because we carry that context with it. So we're able to understand, did you back up the app server, the web server, and the database? And are you looking to bring it back from 30 seconds ago or 30 years ago all together as one application? That's why it's so important for us to be able to do this. And of course, you want to be always protected. As you can see in the circle here, really overlapping of the short term and the long term gives you the best protection. Of course, it's non-disruptive as well because we're doing this on the recovery side. So you can restore within seconds. You can also protect without worrying about any stun or issues or agents. The flexibility and the choice of where and when to recover is yours. And ultimately, we satisfy the 321 concept for data protection by bringing you three copies in two different locations, one of those being offsite, because you're already offsite. You're already doing this on another place. So you can bring these with you to multiple different offsites. This helps you really enforce those logical breaks in those systems to really avoid disaster. But it's really important that we make this easy. So being able to set those retention policies for 
daily incrementals and either weekly or monthly fulls. We want to do this in a space efficient way because we've become known to be very efficient in how we use our resources. And setting those policies for the short term or for the long term all happens in that same workflow. This brings this all together so you can do it at the virtual protection group level. Why is that important? Because it helps you understand how to bring together all of the pieces for that application. As I was saying, really, it's all about the application. So as you saw, the ERP application go from the short term to the long term. Maybe I'm doing this for compliance reasons. Maybe I have a corporate compliance mandate that says once a year for my long-term retained copies, I need to bring back an entire application. In the past, maybe you would you know, set up long-term retention on a server such as the SQL Server. You would go and bring that SQL Server back and then you would rebuild the infrastructure as it was if you could get the bits all the way back to that point in time from a year ago. We've made it so much easier by bringing back all of those pieces in one container that is that ERP application from that day. So maybe it's the app, web tier, and the database all as they were with all the business logic. This makes your ability to meet corporate compliance and other compliance that much faster, almost instantaneous. So why is the Elastic Journal architecture that unique? Really what it does is bring together that continuous data protection. So from your production site to your replication site or your replica site and being able to deposit that. So you have your replica and your journal there on your go fast storage, but you want to be space efficient. You don't want to keep years worth of data on that more expensive storage. So we allow you to pick whatever type of storage you would like to use as your repository. We're not sitting there forcing you to buy a box from us, buy disk from us, buy CPU and memory from us. You can go and get those scales of economy. You can even leverage cloud gateways and be able to utilize us to put that out to that secondary storage, be it secondary storage or even object-based storage. And we help to help bring this to you so that you have all the pieces. But again, these are pieces you already have. If you're an existing customer, you already have our ZVM or our Zerto Virtual Manager. You have that on both sides. You have our virtual replication appliances, the VRAs on both sides. There are no new pieces. What we've done is brought this into our award-winning scale and single platform to make it so simple for you. And of course, you still need to have things such as intelligent index and search to quickly find and recover what you're looking for. This helps you see across that pod. So you have your ZVM and your ZVM, that's a pod. You'd be able to go and search where those VMs were. Maybe the VM is no longer around and you wanna recover from that repository. Here you can go in by date and name and be able to search across time. We've tried to make it extremely simple so that you can bring it back in an unstructured and scalable way. Also, we wanted to bring together those data protection workflows so that you know how to recover and you know how to restore. And we've brought it to you so you know what objects you're going after so that you can come in and need, you know you need to recover a file. You can quickly search for that file. You see the results across all of your targets and repositories that that ZVM can see. You look and select the checkpoints, and then you use the recovery orchestration to bring back that file you're looking for. All very simplified. This is what we've been known for, is tying in the orchestration and automating it so that you get better utilization out of your people. And of course, we wanted to add target repositories. As I kind of mentioned before, we're not in the hardware business. In fact, you know, if you see this, yeah, feel free to kick me in the shin if we ever put out uh, hardware. That's not my thing, uh, for those of you who know me for quite some time now. But what we do focus on is giving you ways to optimize and get higher levels of return on investment from the gear you already have there. Maybe you bought somebody else's kit. Maybe you bought 
uh, HPE store once, maybe you bought an exagrid or a data domain, or you just use a regular NAS system, maybe it's a NetApp, and that's what you're using for your long-term repository. Well, we enable that by bringing you those generic targets being, say, a network share and using SMB or NFS. Or if you're going and using one of those purpose-built backup appliances, PBBAs as they call them, like an HPE store once or an Exagrid, you can actually select them. And we actually optimize our data flow to those purpose-built backup appliances to maximize the throughput. We've actually done some testing in our own labs to make sure that we are playing nice in this infrastructure to help you be as efficient as possible. And again, then you get to ride the economics of those purpose-built backup appliances and the dedupe and compression, even the replication that they offer to offsite it once again. This way you can leverage all of that and you get your better scales of economy. Again, not having to have one singular vendor that you have to uh, choke all the time. You can ride the economies on the hardware side. And of course, bringing it together with Elastic Journal, which marries that short-term and long-term retention together so that you can cover the different use cases. We see that 86% of the use cases are gonna be covered from a granular nature. That's where you're gonna get most of your recovery from. But we wanna provide that if you have corporate governance or real governance from uh, a governmental agency or even an archival uh, type of compliance need, that you'll be able to hit those long-term retained copies as well. But that's not enough. You need to wrap around that the intelligent index and search, as well as those data protection workflows to make it easy. It's one integrated system to help you get from seven years to 70 years, or even go down to as granular as seven seconds before. Not only that, but bringing it together all in one simple to use interface that help you bring together your entire experience. What we did was we actually spent a lot of time with our customers over the last year, looking at how they utilized our actual user interface. And we've made some changes there to go and enhance and make it even easier to find what you're looking for, plus giving it a nice new look and feel. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Heisbert for a demo of Zerto 7. Take it away. Thank you very much, Rob. I'm really excited that I am now able to show you Zerto 7.0. Um, there's a lot of features we've added to the product. One of them is the new user interface. Um, so the, the one that you can actually see right now. Uh, of course, I'm also gonna look at some of the other features that we've built into Zerto 7 that really allow you to change the way you think about backup right now. Um, let's start with the UI. As you can see, fresh, clean, new look and feel to the UI. We've aligned with maybe some of the other tools you're using in your environment right now. So a lot of the navigational components are moved to the left side of the screen, but you can still see all the details that you're used to. We still show you the real time RPO you are achieving for your VPGs right now. We still give you the ability to see all the alerts, events and tasks that have been run in your environment. But what is new is that we now allow you to go directly into Zerto Analytics by clicking the Zerto Analytics menu item on the left side as well, making it just, just that much easier to dig into some of the historical reporting. Maybe you wanna see an RPO history of the last 90 days. Um, so giving you the ability to quickly move into Zerto Analytics really allows you to use that in a little bit more efficient way. Now, of course, we've talked a lot about long-term retention, so let's dig into some of the long-term retention features. Now, I have set up long-term retention on a file server, specifically the file server VPG, which contains one file server. So if I open up that VPG, first thing you'll notice retention status right here, it shows you the result of the latest retention process. So when the, latest, when the last time the retention process has run, um, it happened at 17.58 a couple of days ago, 
So now I can actually go into the settings of this VPG. Of course, we still have our journal, um, the journal for short term retention, really giving you the flexibility to recover to seconds ago or up to 30 days ago. Uh, and this really allows you to to satisfy some of those, well, let's say 90% of your restore capabilities. Now, what we've added is a retention policy and the retention policy became a lot more advanced in 0 to 7. We now allow you to really give them that, that daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, grandfather, father, son rotation scheme, scheme to what you want to do to protect your data for a longer amount of time using secondary storage, really using that cost efficient storage. So simply enable it on your Rotor Protection Group, select the target repository. Um, Another thing, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second, is file system indexing. But now I can really set that retention. Let's say I want to take daily, daily copies off points in time out of the journal and move them into the long-term retention. Um, then have a weekly full. Uh, also add monthly fulls that I want to keep for 12 months and even add yearly to the equation. So keeping the data for as long as I want. Like I said, one thing we added to 07 is file system indexing and file system indexing really allows you to find those files or find the VMs that contain those files and across the different points in time that you have stored on long term retention repositories. Now, I can opt in specific VMs. Uh, as you can imagine, you don't want every single VM to be indexed. So we give you the ability to only select the VMs that you actually want to be indexed. The file server is it's actually a great example of that. And once the retention process runs, at the end of it, we'll automatically start indexing those VMs. Now let's zoom into the retention status. So the retention status piece in the left side of the of the, uh, of the screen in the, the menu item retention status shows me exactly which VPGs I have re uh, long term retention enabled on. Uh, I can also see it for specific VMs. It shows me how many restore points and of course the results of the last time we've done it. Things like how much capacity, uh, how big is that VPG and, and, and how much data am I protecting. Now this is also where I can restore data from. So if we go into the actions menu, you'll see the restore feature. And this really allows me to restore specific VMs or an entire VPG from the long term retention repositories. So this is typically something you'll use when you need to recover a, a file server or an email environment as it was, let's say, a year ago for some of those regulation compliance, maybe some of the legal use cases out there. So I just simply select the virtual protection group, select the point in time that I actually want to recover from. It will show you exactly how many VMs, how many volumes. And then I can select where I want to recover it to. So recovery will take place on the restore site. And the restore site is basically the same as the recovery site. Because everything we do, even taking those long-term retention copies, happens on the recovery site. That means that there's zero impact to the production performance and to the production systems. Simply select the VM, select the data store that I want to recover it to, click next, and I can start the restore of this specific VM or this specific virtual protection group. Now, as you've seen in the long term retention settings, I have enabled file system indexing on this specific, on the VM, the file server VM. Now, what that allows me to do is really search on that VM across those different points in time I've stored on long term retention repositories and search for specific files. Now, because it is site based right now, I have to go to the recovery site. In this case, it's my Amsterdam data center. This is where I'm replicating it to. This is where I'm also taking the long term retention copies from. Go to actions, go to search and restore. And this simply allows me to select a VM, uh, select a retention set date. So I can search across retention, uh, long-term retention points in time for the last month, the last week. In this case, select it the last week and simply type the file name. So let's search for Zerto right now. So what it will do, it will search those indexes across the different points in time. 
and show me the files it will find. Now, right now, 82 items found, of course, really important. We want to save, keep and safeguard our administration guide. And if I click on it, it will actually show me the file it found and also showing in which points in time this actually exists. Now we know where it is right now. I need the version from April 8th. Um, as you can see, it also shows you the file size. So let's say there, if there's a huge difference in size, you actually know which one to restore. And you can now select to restore the VM that the file is on, or maybe restore the entire application if the file has dependencies on database entries, really in, in one simple click. Now, long-term retention relies on specific repositories. And these repositories can be different types. So it's all about cost-effective storage. So what we actually want to do, uh, or, or what I want to do right now, is show you how those repositories work. Now, I simply go to Setup. This is where I can install the VRAs. I can, I can see some of the data store usage. But it also shows me the tab Repositories. And in the repositories, I can actually add a new one, type a name. I'll test for now. And this is where I can select the different storage types. Now, out of the box, we have built-in support for purpose-built backup appliances like HPE Store Ones, Exagrid, Dell Data Domain, and other deduplicated storage appliances. So let's say if you are using an Exagrid appliance, please select this storage type because we have optimized the way we store the long-term retention points in time on that specific device. Selected. Just add the details, where is it located, what's the path, is it NFS or SMB, and simply click Save. As you can see, I already have one SMB type connected to my environment. Right now, we support SMB and NFS. Um, in future versions, we will support other protocols as well. Um, and it also shows me exactly how many VPGs are protected on this uh, repository, how much restore points do I have available. Now this is most of what I can show you of LTR in this demo right now. One other cool feature that we've added is what we call evacuate host. And evacuate host really allows you to proactively um, move um, VMs that are replicated to a specific host and move them to other hosts or actually intelligently load balance them across other hosts so you can perform maintenance on your, uh, on your recovery hosts. So the only thing we need to do is go into the VRAs, select the VRA, and say evacuate host. So what it will do right now is it will, it will allow me to simply move all the VMs across my other recovery VRAs that I have available. In my case, I only have one available, so it's an easy easy calculation. It only needs to move all the VMs to the other VRA. But if you have multiple VRAs available, we'll make sure we'll balance them evenly across all those other VRAs. Now, this will really help you in those maintenance use cases where you need to upgrade an ESXi host or maybe perform some, some firmware upgrades on that host. Um, and this really gives you the ability to easily move it off of those hosts and, and set them into maintenance mode. Now, everything you see from an evacuate host perspective is also available using our API. So if you're using um, orchestration tools to, to perform these kinds of actions automatically, you can integrate that within the workflows you have available for maintenance. One other thing that I would like to zoom into right now is Zerto Analytics. Uh, as you know, Zerto Analytics is our software as a service delivered analytics portal. Um, so the, the beauty of this is that we can actually continue to update it. It has a different release cycle than uh, Zerto has. And one thing we've added recently is the storage analytics. Um, and this really allows you to dig into where is my storage going? What is happening to my capacity and what is it being used for? So I can go to specific data stores and really zoom into what is being used from a Zerto perspective. So we'll show you everything we need to use for the journal. We'll show you where the files are located, what has been provisioned, what we actually use. And we do the same thing, of course, for all the recovery or replica volumes that we have stored there as well.
Now let's say I have virtual replication appliances installed. This is ex exactly what we'll show you in the other environment as well. We'll show you exactly which are the VMDKs and to what VM or to what VRA do they belong. And of course, the same goes to anything that we protect in that environment as well. This is a journal and it belongs to this specific um, VM. Now this really allows you to dig into where is my storage going, what VM is causing, maybe what issues, or um, help you with maybe internal troubleshooting as well. Now, this concludes the demo for today. Um, of course, there's way more we can show you, and, and please reach out if you want to have a more detailed overview of 07 and all the things that have changed in there, because again, like I said, there's much more that we can talk about. Uh, but for now, we're limited on time. I'd like to give it uh, back to Rob. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Heisbert. Really appreciate it. Now I want to welcome John Grant, who's an infrastructure analyst for EPRI. Uh, welcome, John. Thanks, Rob. I'm happy to be here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do at EPRI, and a little bit about EPRI itself. Well, I've worked for EPRI for uh, going on five years now, and I handle um, all of the uh, all of the backups in BC uh, BCDR for um, for EPRI. Great. What is what does EPRI do? Um, well, EPRI is a, a nonprofit organization um, that conducts research and development uh, related to the generation, delivery, and use of electricity. Um, it helps address, uh, address challenges in electricity, including the reliability, uh, efficiency, uh, affordability, um, and health and safety uh, issues as well. That's pretty important stuff. Um, so I, I know you've been a customer of Zerto's for a little bit now. And uh, so why don't you tell us how you've been using Zerto? We use uh, nightly backups. Um, and how we use Zerto um, is, is we protect um, all of our production tier one applications with Zerto, including our SAP environment. And we've been using that for, for five years now. Um, very happy with the Zerto product. It, it provides us the ability to only go, really only go to our, um, to our backup, um, our backup nightly backups when we absolutely have to as a, as a last resort. But with the capabilities of, of Zerto and what it can do for us, it's our main go-to, um, whether it's <clears throat> for disaster recovery, ransomware, um, migrations, um, we go to Zerto first because of the RPOs uh, and RTOs we get with the uh, we get with the product. Um, if, if somebody comes to me in the middle of the day and says, "Hey, John, um, I I just deleted a folder that had 55 Excel spreadsheets in it," I can I can calm them down. I can say, "Listen, no worries, I got you." If we just had our nightly backups to rely on, it wouldn't be possible. Um, to do to do that, so um, I can I can almost go back to to five you know from from a minute to five minutes ago and uh, and bring back bring back that information very very quick. Yeah, very different than uh, the you know legacy backup solutions to say the least. And how how do you? I, I know you were part of the early adopters program. Uh, what you kind of think about checking out Zerto Seven? Well, I think Zerto 07 is going to really bring um, is really going to bring a Zerto as a company to the next level. Um, it's really going to give them the ability to to begin um, knocking off um, some of these backup companies and and do to the, all of BC and DR in one product um, and uh, and um, it's uh, Zerto 07 is really um, really great product. Uh, I was a part of the early adopters program and, uh, and I just like the way the product flows. We tested um, we tested the LTR uh, on VMs. We brought back VMs um, from LTR. We brought back single files from LTR. It's uh, and, and, the, and the new interface um, compared to the old interface, it's very, very fluid. They've done a complete um, uh, complete refacing of the application and everything just flows very well within the application. 
Uh, it's, a, it's, awesome. it's a phenomenal product and, and I actually have it, <laughs> I have it running, um, actually my two stacks that I used for, um, for the early adopter program, they are on seven and they're going to stay on seven. Um, that's how well and how confident I am with the product. Um, so they're going to stay on seven until, um, it goes completely GA. I'm not even going to move it back to six, uh, six, five. Um, because it's worked that well for us. That's awesome. Well, hey, I really appreciate you jumping on with us and kind of going through this. I know you're looking for some stuff out there into the future as well, which we're hoping to get to. And, you know, things like being able to do, uh, you know, your file oriented backups. And, you know, I know you're looking at compliance out to one year with Zerto 7 as well, um, you know, we're really excited to have you on board and I, I wanna thank you for being part of this launch. Absolutely, thank you. Now to summarize, really bringing Converge DR and Backup into one platform, doing it natively, agentlessly, and really building off our core continuous data protection. Really, if you're gonna do Converge DR and Backup, you really needs to be continuous. Also, it needs to be journal-based, giving you that fine grain granularity of site, application, VM, all the way down to the file at any point in time. And doing it at the full application stack, bringing that entire application, app server, web server, database, off of any storage, any device, any cluster, back to any point in time. But wait. And there's more, and it wouldn't be enough to just bring you Converge DR and backup. We also brought you cloud enhancements, our platform updates, our new and enhanced user experience, as well as expanding our SaaS delivered analytics platform. So let's tackle the cloud platform first and get into really what matters to our customers. We've enhanced our recovery time objective to Azure, we've actually started to leverage the underpinnings of Azure to use scale sets to help you grow quickly and reduce the time it takes to get into there and be able to recover. We also, for AWS, support encryption at rest natively now as well. But we haven't forgotten about our cloud service providers either. Those are the ones that bring you industry leading DR as a service or DRAS, and we've helped them by bringing more cloud control updates through APIs and a new set of billing instrumentation, as well as enhancing our support, and I would say our industry leading support with vCloud Director by bringing them single VM support, as well as reducing the RTO and reflection time by moving to the full API that helps them bring simplicity into their infrastructure. And platform updates. Heisbert really kind of took you through the evacuate host and maintenance mode enhancements that we had. Uh, also, we went through and brought to you Zerto Virtual Manager or ZVM clustering. What this does is maybe you have one vCenter uh, in Miami and it connects to several ESX servers spread around the Caribbean and you don't want to have to put a vCenter out of there, but you want redundancy of your ZVM, now you can actually cluster it at the database level underneath. Again, helping you be resilient. Also bringing you tolerant failover, because sometimes you have a bad acting VM in a virtual protection group. Leveraging a feature we brought out in the last release, which was single VM failover out of a VPG or a virtual protection group, now you can fail over an entire virtual protection group that allows you to exclude one VM that may not be recoverable, helping you get through that tolerant failover faster. And of course, as you saw with Heisberg, really that new and enhanced user experience, I won't spend a lot of time on here. We're definitely looking for your feedback to enhance this as we go along as well. And then let's jump into analytics. Heisberg also went into analytics to kind of give you an idea of how easy it is to use straight out of the ZVM GUI. And part of that is to really bring you dashboard enhancements, 
new storage planning to help you understand how are you operating our system. This looks to give you better analysis, better planning tools, and better troubleshooting tools that are site-wide. This could be multi-site-wide for that matter. And this enables you to understand historically your recovery point objectives across all your sites. And of course, we brought this to you through APIs. So maybe 90 days worth of data is not enough. You can actually use the APIs to pull this data down and use your in-house BI tools to keep it going for longer. And we're also in the process of releasing through that same portal a new resource planner. So maybe you've been a VMware to VMware customer of ours and you're starting to get involved with Azure and you want to under, understand based on your workload that you have in your current infrastructure, how many ZCAs, and those are our cloud appliances, our Zerto cloud appliances, may I need to go and actually put out there into Azure and what should that layout look like? And how many VMs should I put on each of those? This is the type of what if scenario planning that you'll be able to get. What we will do is continue to enhance this and because it's SaaS delivered, we'll be able to do that on more than an every six month basis to drive and help you better utilize not only public cloud, but private cloud, your on-premise and even your hybrid. And this will help our customers size their new data centers as well. Once again, and always, we're doing what we promised and we're changing the game, bringing you disaster recovery, backup, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, migration capabilities, all orchestrated with analytics in one singular IT resilience platform. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Caroline to take us home. Thank you, Rob. And I'd also like to thank Heisberg as well as also John. Um, great webinar. And so what I'd like to do is just make sure that you know where to find out more about Zerto 7. So go to Zerto.com. You can find it on our home page. You can also try it. Why not try it? So there is Zerto.com, try or buy Zerto. So just a couple of URLs for you. I would like to also talk about ZertoCon our user conference on May the 20th in Nashville, uh, Music City. There is a special code at Z7 launch or Z7 launch. And this is for a 30% discount for anyone who's attended this webinar. And this is a great way for you to come to this wonderful city to find out more about Zerto 7 and also what we're doing on other innovations too. There will be hands-on labs, there'll be certifications, there are going to be in-depth sessions, and we've got a great uh, keynote lineup from Microsoft to IDC, as well as our own executive team, and our, our guest speaker, Peyton Manning. And so this is really a conference for you to attend that is in Nashville, that you can find out all the information that you need to be successful with the Zerto IT Resilience Platform. Let us now turn over to some questions that have been asked throughout the webinar. Uh, Rob's team and mine have been busy um, uh, answering some questions as we've actually gone through the webinar, but uh, I'd like to address everybody with a few questions uh, or rather answers to those questions. There's quite a, a few that asked about the recording of this and presentation. So we will be sending out a recording, the recording on demand that you can share with your colleagues. We will also have the uh, slides available for you as well. Another group of questions that we actually had was around the target repositories and what we support. There was, what do we support? Um, there was a question about HP Store One. So I thought maybe Rob, you could just sort of, uh, sort of share with us exactly the target repositories that we're supporting with Seven. Sure. With this release, we'll support any repository that uses NFS or SMB. So that does include things such as uh, Exagrid, as was mentioned by Heisberg, uh, Data Domain, Store Once. Uh, you could use some of the cloud-related gateways that support NFS and SMB as well. Uh, again, your, your mileage will vary based on the product that you use, and we're happy to hear the results. 
Great, thanks, Rob. And uh, actually, talking about data domain, there was a, a question as re in regards to as a target. One of the big advantages of data domain is the DD boost to have client side deduplication. So, um, can you expand on that? Maybe Heisman? No, absolutely. So, typically, what you see is that those kind of enhancements are produced for legacy backup. Um, what they tend to do is they try to actually reduce performance impact and reduce backup windows using technologies like that. Because Zerto is flipping the whole data protection around, we actually don't have any production performance impact. We don't have any, I mean, grasp of backup windows. So we don't really need to support technologies like that. What we can actually do is we can rely on those purpose-built backup appliances and, and building integrations with those to have deduplication available at the target side. So they are designed to do that, so they do that best. So we can just make sure that we optimize our workloads for those kinds of targets. And we do have some, uh, some need or want or desire to integrate with those. And a lot of times it is for uh, doing some of the network compression and bandwidth saving type functionalities as well. So we're gonna take it on a case by case basis. Uh, stay tuned as we'll be talking about some more detailed integrations we do with HPE store once uh, later this year. And then just a couple around the um, licensing and uh, is it available for download right now and uh, upgrade path? Maybe Rob, you yeah, want to sure. That? The bits are up there now, so feel free to go and download uh, at will at free random, as they would say. And uh, you can upgrade from any version of 6.5 up to 7.0. Uh, if you're on 6.0, you'll have to temporarily uh, make a little pit stop on 6.5 and go all the way to 7.0. You don't have to spend any time there, uh, but we do help you with that. And from a licensing perspective, this is actually included. So all of the new long-term retention features that we discussed uh, that satisfy those backup use cases are part of our Enterprise Cloud Edition license. So if you have it, you own it already. Enjoy. <laughs> That's great. Um, hi, uh, can you talk a little bit about the restore and recovering data to different locations? So a couple of questions on that. Yes, absolutely. So by default, when you start the recovery process, um, you'll be able to select the repository you want to restore from. That will be the repository on the target side, so on the recovery side. You can then uh, either use some of the built-in technology you have in your hypervisor to move them back to the production workload. What you could also do is actually use replication methods that are uh, like in purpose-built backup appliances or in any other storage you might use for LTR, replicate those back to, for example, the production site and then mount that production site repository onto Zerto and then recover to the production site. So there's multiple ways to go about. And if you want more details, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Great. And, uh... There were a lot of cloud questions that were actually asked, and um, I think you, you already answered some, but did, maybe we could just expand a little bit because some of them were about support on our hybrid and uh, so that you can have a mix of on-premise and also cloud and sure. what clouds, public clouds do we support for replication? Yep, so today we support Azure and Amazon for replication. Uh, we do have plans to add support natively for some of those clouds, cloud repositories. We're actually working uh, with all of the major vendors as targets for the long-term retention. Uh, so that's separate than our replication as well. Uh, but today you can actually use some of the cloud gateways to go to those clouds as well, such as Databox Edge and others uh, with Azure. And so also, we do have on the roadmap to add clouds uh, as platforms as we go, uh, probably looking out into 2020 at this point for some of those uh, from a replication standpoint. And then um, a few questions about regulations and uh, compliance uh, reporting. Maybe you could address that a little bit more. Yeah, we don't do any specific re requirements uh, around compliance for the long-term retention. Uh, so we can add in, and there's some definite um, reporting that we will be adding over the course of this year into our analytics around this uh, to satisfy that. So we're definitely looking for your feedback on what types of reports around the long-term retention you're looking for. Uh, we do have our compliance reports for the disaster recovery, uh, being able to show compliance for failovers and failover tests. 
uh, those are still in the product and still you know big key piece of what we do great and then um question here about restoring individual files or must you recover the entire vm where the file resides so anything that's located in the journal you can already recover actually with uh, as of version 5.0 or 4.5 actually you could start recovering files directly from the journal uh, with 07 we're adding the long-term retention capabilities we, we have added index and search you can search and find those files right now the workflow allows you to recover the vm that the file is located in or if there are some dependencies with specific applications you can recover the entire bpg so individual files definitely from the journal up to 30 days ago using journal file level restore um, if you want to grab files out of the long-term retention copies right now we require you to restore the v, uh, the vm Great. The, um, a little bit about the LTR process. There was a question about when you uh, when the LTR process runs sort of um, uh, daily, weekly, monthly, is it running a separate backup process uh, like the previous versions of Zerto or is it essentially moving the applicable portions of the journal that are meeting LTR criteria to secondary storage? So what we've basically done is we already have our scale up architecture available. So we don't necessarily run a separate process or service. What we've done is we integrated it with our virtual replication appliances and added an additional component that is responsible for restoring and backing up data. Now, the data is actually pulled from the journal and or the replica disk. So we'll only replicate the bits that, are, that actually have been changed. So it's, it's definitely incremental on a block base, so change block tracking is with others call it as well. Um, so once we'll do a full, and then when you enable the incremental um, retention, then we'll only take the incrementals when need to. Yeah, and that's actually a subset of even what's in the journal from that perspective, but you can think the journal is space efficient already because it's only the right order fidelity. So we know what's changed with those rights already as as Bert had said, it's the, really the change block tracking that we're already leveraging, which was core to the continuous data protection that we have in the product. Great, and I'm still seeing some questions about um, uh, the recording. So just again, the, the recording will be available after this uh, finishes, so you will get an email that you can share with colleagues and the presentation too. There were some questions, uh, several people asked about how can I get more information, more deeper dive, uh, certainly going to the website, but I think you're looking for a little bit more deeper than that. So uh, if you know your account manager, please don't hesitate to reach out and we can set up some time to provide more of a, uh, a deeper dive into Certo 7. We will be following up with everybody that has attended. Um, the um, attended the uh, webinar and all, the, all those who've actually uh, registered and could, didn't manage to attend too. And lastly, please don't forget ZertoCon because this is a great way for you to come to a wonderful city, Music City, Nashville, on May the 20th. And we will have um, uh, deep dive sessions. We've got hands-on uh, labs. We've got new certifications around uh, Zerto 7. And um, we've also got uh, some great keynote speakers, as I mentioned, uh, Peyton Manning is going to be our keynote speaker as well as also Microsoft and IDC and our own executives too. There is a discount, there's a code, ZLaunch30 or ZLaunch30 um, that you can actually type in when you actually register. Um, so, with that, and, and I know the, the fact that there are a lot of other sort of questions that we've had, so we will get back to people on those questions and provide uh, an external FAQ that you will be able to uh, find an answer to a lot of these questions as well. So I think uh, with that, we'll close the webinar today. And I thank Rob and John and Heisberg, and uh, I hope that you got what you needed and uh, as are excited as we are about Zerto 7. So this is great. Thank you.